Hello my soccerers and welcome to a new reality. Uh, before we get into the Champions League, I have to say the reaction to the video that I posted yesterday on my new focus on the channel and that I want to do things a little bit more bare bones and this is not the first more bare bones video on the Champions League. Just me talking, no fancy graphics or anything in there. Well, you will get them tomorrow, but before I start with any of that Thank you so much for the positive response. I am truly overwhelmed and it's not only on YouTube, on some of my social channels. I also got uh, responses. I will take out time today and I'm anyway behind with, uh, with, with from, but I will take time out today to respond to each and every one of you personally because it's important to me. As I said I, uh, yesterday and so on, I try to now make the time and when I make the time I dedicate my time to that so doing this now uh, after I have done actually work brought kids to school now I will take a break then I'll go out for a walk then we'll come back to work and yeah uh, will be it's much easier load on me to be honest so far at least this is how it feels at the moment let's see how it goes moving forward but again Thank you so much for your positive responses, uh, encouraging responses. Uh, it makes it all worthwhile even more. And as I said, I love doing this channel. I even love doing all the statistics and you will get a stats cast tomorrow. I will try to do that if you were interested in that. Let's put that way. Well, Champions League is back. Um, honestly, the choice of jersey that I would have chosen was not that obvious. I mean, I went with Ajax because, you know, of, of the teams that I really saw support, Ajax had the best result and the others were not maybe doing all that super well. Except for one where I, it's a uh, um, travesty that I don't have a jersey and that is, of course, Young Boys. Why? Well, uh, I have to say, Young Boys have a long-standing fan relationship between Lusk and Young Boys. It, it, it exists, so uh, there's a disconnection. B, I think Bern is probably the nicest town in Switzerland. And C, I've been there last year and I drove by the stadium and I was intending to stop by and go into a store. Although I knew in Switzerland stuff is expensive, but if they would have had a good jersey, I would have bought one right there. I just didn't figure out how to park there. It was not quite obvious and then suddenly I'm on the freeway out of town. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I have to say, um, and uh, the other thing, uh, I, have, uh, no, let's, I have to say, Tuesday, I really only watched the early games because the late, the late games, that was the point where I was already quite uh, wiped that I said, no, I cannot. I should not watch the late Champions League games and I, in a way I was actually vindicated because there was only one really good game in there but the early games really had 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 had, had anyway. I mean the Young Boys win over Manchester United is probably the big headline over the Sevilla Salzburg game was probably one of the craziest games that you will ever see in the Champions League especially the first half. Um, you, I mean it started as you would uh, expect United to take, take an early lead uh, through Ronaldo after a wonderful cross by Bruno Fernandes and little did we know I mean at that point actually Young Boys was or, or, already pressing and they have already you know Adi Hütter was uh, the now club uh, coach he introduced the system there and they have been with Seane and now with uh, David Wagner they have also this aggressive Red Bull style uh, play that will cause you problems if you're not prepared for it and where you need to have a whole lot of class and United does have class and I even don't want to say that United feel the second string squad which, which is something that I frequently find uh, that especially English teams that are, are doing in the Champions League that don't uh, pull out a full strength squad which I do understand why they're doing it but for me you know, grow, uh, grow, growing up, and I still have this, it is the league, it's great, but you want to shine in the European co co competition where you pull out your best squads. And I guess the group stage format actually kills that one a little bit. Uh, so once Ronaldo scored that goal, um, that kind of shocked Bern a little bit. Um, but then uh, they got the boost with Van Bissaka, making a rather rash ch challenge and getting sent off. Uh, you know, I always have 
I know the ballet Let of Lois is totally a red card. I will not uh, do that. I will not go against that. I always have this feeling that, um, you know, if there's no intent in there, is it really fair? Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I have something. But uh, from that red card on, I think this is where I I'll, I'll, I'll say uh, Sorsha is not the best coach out there. Because at this moment, you got to take Ronaldo off. I know he's gonna moan and be mad and whatever, but at this moment you gotta uh, take Ronaldo because he's not the one who is gonna close down uh, our players and run and run and run. He's a liability out there. You need to take Ronaldo off there. No, you keep him on and you have no more shot on goal. And young boys get, get a win. Uh, I think the equalizer was fully deserved and then even the winner, I mean, it was a, a, a horrible Jesse Lingard back pass uh, that you cannot have and young boys win 2-1 um, probably the the marquee result in many ways of this round although there were a few in there uh, as I said Sevilla South Salzburg absolutely crazy 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 game there were four penalties in the first half three were given for Salzburg <laughs> and they missed the first and the third one the first one by uh, the Emmy was saved the second one uh yes in this conquer where third one goes on, on to the post I mean this is one of those things I think ahead of the game if you say any Salzburg player you get a 1-1 one -one at Sevilla great we'll take it after the game you actually think you must have won you should have won that game and, and it was a very heated game because uh sevilla was really hot-blooded there and they get there uh he was also threw a penalty uh where maxi verba who had played for sevilla but they didn't have a good time just pushed over sevilla attacker um so it was 1-1 one, one and going both sides. I mean, Salzburg was very well in, in the game, but then a red, a yellow red for end theory kind of a little bit killed of the game because then Sevilla was just hanging, hanging back. They knew they have the bad individuals, maybe hit them on the counter attack. Um, but if you're Salzburg, you think actually you probably should have won this game. Of the late games, Bayern completely destroyed Barcelona. I, th I have to say now for Barcelona, the... Uh, this is contentious. For me, the redeeming factor is the part I actually like those Barcelona jerseys because they look Barcelona, not like the re regular home jerseys. I know why they have not dedicated Champions League jerseys because UEFA doesn't allow contrasting sleeves, which they have for this uh, ugly creation for a uh, home jersey. And even though the colors are not Barcelona colors, if on there, but if you look at it in match, it looks very much like Barcelona. So I don't mind this jersey. Actually, there's something neat about it. But uh, also the Bayern away churches with the Alpine land landscape also not something new boss. But I have to say, Bayern completely, absolutely, 100% dominated Barcelona. Um, this was in many ways worse than the A2 because remember in the A2 at least in the first 20 or minutes or so, uh, just before Bayern got rolling, uh, they were in the game. Here they were never in the game, and yeah. Um, I said the level, the playing field is much more level in many ways, and I meant that smaller nations can really take on bigger clubs. Um, in that case, it doesn't go that way. Kiev, Benfica, uh, go, uh, go, goes raw. I think Kiev are very late had a, a potential winner. They is allowed a very entertaining game was Villarreal Atalanta. Where Atalanta took an early lead. Villarreal came back in the second half and Atalanta gets an equalizer. That was a game that was back and forth, loads of uh, seemingly loads of fun to watch, and I would have expected it from these two sides. Um, uh, Lille should have won against Wolfsburg. Uh, Brooks got getting sent off late, but before that already they had many, many chances. And I think even one, if not two goals disallowed. Um, um, it, was weird. it was a really, really, really weird game that Lille probably should have uh, won and not just in the middle of Wolfsburg being lucky there. Um, Chelsea did not show much, but you have Lukaku and you scored a goal. That's about that. And Juve made short shrift of Malmö. Um, first half, three goals, and then just seeing the game out. But I have to say the Tuesday action, except for the early games, was not as, as great. It, on Wednesday, it was the other way around. This time, I, I saw really, really most of it. Um, the early games, yes, Dortmund should have won by way more than just a 2-1 of uh, They had a 2-0, they hit the post, they had many chances. And then Leiden starts up and Besiktas pulls one back and yeah, it did not get dangerous again, but um, that should have been 
uh, destruction that Sheriff with a great counter-attacking stra strategy beat Schachter on their debut is probably another one of those stories. Um, it's just with this whole Transnistria thing and, you know, Schach Donetsk also being under Russian group, there is something a little bit weird about this match. But, you know, it's a good story. And, I mean, just Sheriff uh, being called like that and then having the Sheriff star, uh, it's just funny. But it was all about uh, the later games. City Leipzig, nine goals. Yes, City were usually two goals ahead. Uh, but Leip Leipzig three times could cut the, uh, the lead in half. Always through Nkunku. But City were just so much better. I have to say the second goal, the own goal, um, was it Konate? Uh, that was brilliant. I mean... A what De Bruyne does and then the crawl across in the way Konate puts it in the net, in his own net, uh, was just a brilliant goal. Jack Grealish on his debut gets a goal, uh, but that was thoroughly entertaining without ever having a lot of suspense in it because Manchester City is just so much better than Leipzig. Uh, the other thing I thought, uh, if I actually do not dislike this Manchester City jer jersey, although I find the slivers here on the side of the bed, but I thought if I would get this and I would get this with the names and getting with the Champions League na names and with the digital numbers, that actually looked really fun, I have to say. Uh, that looks quite cool. Uh, and yeah, it's I know it's in memory of the um, Aguero, the Aguero goal. Club Rouge dominated against PSG despite us getting the debut of M&M, Messi, Neymar, Mbappe, or Mbappe, Neymar, Messi. A crossbar uh, when it was 1-1, but Club Rouge really came out uh, for a fight and actually took the game to PSG, who had a kind of a lackluster performance. Yes, Herrera gets the goal, and it, it, that's just indicative of the performance that, you know, it is not M, N, or M, it is Herrera who gets the goal. And I think the problem for PSG, and it, may, maybe they can get it together, but... Um, None of those three up there, uh, up there is going to do the dirty work. So you will always have individual brilliance, uh, maybe once everyone is getting fit. But I don't think it's enough to win the Champions League. Uh, as enticing as the whole thing is. But I said it when Messi signed there. I said it's super exciting. It is probably the biggest story. However, it will be a major disaster. I think it points already this way. Uh, Atletico Porto... I honestly think a Porto got robbed by a goal. Uh, maybe there was a handball in there, and uh, yeah, it's, I didn't see it touching, but it seemed like a good goal, goal to me, but that was a, a horrible game. Oh, what shall I say about Liverpool-Milan? Okay, first things first. Liverpool deserved to win that one. Uh, Milan can get out there with head held high, because at halftime I was actually beaming, and it was kind of funny, because... Uh, I was watching a conf, conf, conf conference and my wife got, got up to brush teeth and exactly while she was brushing teeth, Milan scores two goals. To turn a game around that probably they should have had no business even tying at that point because especially in the first few minutes Liverpool were really, really dominant. Um, it was a Tomori own goal uh, from a Trent Alexander uh, cross. Then, uh, then Mike Mignon saves uh, Salah shot and so on. I, you know... Milan came to play with Liverpool and that made it not easy. Uh, but they shook themselves, you know, after the initial storm and they weathered it and only were one goal down. They, uh, they came back and I have, 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 have to say the patterns of play for both goals were actually quite interesting. Um, having pretty much all the uh, front, front lines involved. Yes, there was no Ibra because... Yeah. He has some inflammation on his Achilles tendon. Maybe you should have tied your school shoes. <laughs> and Giroud also didn't come, come on, but I kind of understood this because he wanted to have a little bit of younger and faster players up front. And uh, that, that's the one thing. This Milan squad is really, really, really young. I was a bit surprised that Tonali did not play because he was really so imperious. But then I thought, you know... If I look at this gauntlet of games, Lazio, Liverpool, Juve. The Liverpool game is probably the one where you are least likely to make points and you can get some valid experience and you uh, get out with a result that's 
you know, you lost, but you know, it's not a loss where you devastated after, although this was maybe also in the cards. But then, yeah, save yourself for Juve. I think I'm fine with that. As I said, they had a 2-1 lead at the halftime, and right after the half, the ball was unfortunate. I think there was an offside. They may, uh, Kiev would have made it 3-1. I mean, at that point, I was, yeah, and then I knew how, how it's going. Salah, it's just not offside, and then a wonderful Henderson shot makes it 3-2. So beat. Ajax, hee hee, 5-1. That was fast. And Sebastian Allaire is only the second player to score four goals on his Champions League debut. The other one, yeah, other formal Ajax legend, although he did it for Milan, of course, Marco von Basten against Göteborg. And the uh, first ever Champions League match of Milan, and this was the first ever Champions League group stage match day in 92. So, um, great von Basten hat trick be honest and then he scored a fourth or two uh, I still have this somewhere I had the newspaper arc okay hung on my wall from Boston as you know was my favorite player but yeah sporting I think at one point had cut it to two three then this was taken off uh, one two and two two three this was taken off I act completely destroying them I hope they can keep keep, keep it up because last season you also thought they will make it through and the season before and then they didn't so um, concentration 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 is needed there and Inter Pro should have won against Real Madrid, but ha 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 Laid on Rodrigo scores a winner with Real Madrid's first shot on goal. First half, Inter definitely should have scored. Uh, second half was a lot more even. It was also a way more entertaining game than the uh, final scoreline would have it. So yeah, that's the my thoughts on the first match day. Was interesting. Was actually fun. Loads of goals, especially on Wednesday. I mean, I enjoyed yesterday evening. Uh, Maybe not the early games as much, but if I take the early games from Tuesday and then the late games from Wednesday, there you had a whole lot of action in there. Would I have enjoyed that Milan gets a better result at Liverpool? Yes, definitely. And I do like the cream colored color, color jerseys, but then, as I said, um, you have to have Juve away in mind and it is Liverpool. Liverpool deserve to win. I was a little bit gutted uh, because I was hope, hope, hoping to get a draw out of that, but I think it was not a total dispiriting performance. And you know, Liverpool is one of the best teams in Europe. Uh, if they play like that and uh, even leaving important players off, uh, the you know Van Dijk was not no, no playing. Then yeah, I I think you take a three-two loss, uh, although there was a hint of a win. There was a hint of a win, or at least a point there, but I uh, gotta be honest, it probably wouldn't have been deserved either. So in any case, see, it's a 20 minute video, but um, that's how long I tend to talk about things. Um, let me know your thoughts on the happenings yesterday. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to the channel and click the little bell icon so that you get updated whenever anything happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day!